What's up, guys? How are y'all? Good. How you doing today? Good. What does that say on your shirt? X Flipper. What's that mean? X Flipper. What does that mean, Sonia? What does that mean? Y'all put on a spot like that? I did. Y'all put on a spot like you that? You wrong for that. I know. Um, hey, hey, why, why are you an X Flipper? Tell me. Um, It's basically our strategy. And instead of flipping properties, we actually burn and we disposition with lease options. So, okay. Whereas the traditional person will flip a property, we kind of look at it from a long-term standpoint, and we prefer to burn and disposition with lease options. That's great. Okay. So that's why basically finding your niche and and doing that over and over and over, right? Yes. That's right. That's so right. X flipper technically doesn't necessarily mean like X wife flipper. Really, it means flipper. Yes. <laughs> I, I love it that's funny yes yeah, so yeah i figured that that's the, x is the pg version that's for my wife so because i didn't yes. like his version yeah if it was up to me i would just put a big x and then you would really do what x what flipper meant <laughs> well i gotta tell you flipping has changed my life man so much that that um that uh i'm i'm pro flipping i love it and I, and I and it's X flipping because that's our niche, but we still flip. So 25% of our portfolio will be flips in a year, and then the other half are birds. 75% are birds, 25% are flips. So we just don't flip a whole lot. It's still in the okay. working lot. The higher end properties are the ones we flip. So if it's 200 or better, usually those numbers work out for flips. 180 yeah. and less, those numbers usually work out for birds for us. Yeah, I got you. Cool. Right. So uh, our meeting is coming up. What are we going to do? What are we going to talk about? I should be asking you. <laughs> I know. I know. Matthew, you are coming to REI Live Birmingham this Tuesday. What yes. are you going to talk about? I'm so excited. Um, I think I'm going to talk about taking action in your business. Um, I think a lot of people get caught up in... Um, just waiting for the right moment. And sometimes you just got to kind of dive in, right? So I think that's what um, I've been really good at in my career is just taking action, making moves and just, you know, making it happen. You might never be quite ready if you wait t t uh, always for the right moment. So I just think taking action and uh, we'll talk about real estate, you know, all the aspects of of my business and the way I do things and see if maybe people can learn a few things of, of the way I, I operate my business and flipping and rentals and Airbnbs and, and, you know, all those things. Sounds good. Sounds good. I'm and, and maybe I can enlighten people how, you know, how to flip multiple properties at the same time Sweet. and, you know, Sweet. run multiple crews. Uh, we, we, t I'm sorry. We typically try to, you know, keep, 30 flips in inventory all the time. So maybe I can help with that. You say 30, like the number 3-0? Yes, sir. 3-0, man. 3-0. Ooh. Yeah. I don't feel like a king most of the time. I feel <laughs> worn out. I got a I got a I got a question for you. Um Okay. Taking action action is a is a massive step. But a lot of people are afraid to fail. When, when you take an action like that, failure is going to come. What's your thoughts on being able to handle failure and, and push it through? Okay, so I'm I'm somewhat like that also. I'm, I take calculated risk. Um, I've always been a little scared at times to, to scale too big. So, you know, I've had to do mine in baby steps, but, but you know, you're, you're never guaranteed to not fail. So, I mean, you know, why not just take a chance? Um, I, I will try to come up with, with better uh, answers on that. I really don't have a great answer. Like, like, <laughs> like, like, how do you prevent failure? You know, you, you do need to, to uh, take calculated risk, like I said, but also you need to just, just, just sometimes you just need to do it. I've seen so many people, it. I've seen so many people sit on the sideline waiting to get in the game and they just never do it. 
and then but 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 once they they finally just it's probably not going to be quite as scary as they think it's going to be right agree mm-hmm. agree uh, i definitely agree um matthew tell us um who is matthew gregory so for the people who don't know who is matthew gregory okay so matthew gregory was was that guy who was scared at one time to get into real estate investing um i, I got married when i was 21. my wife and i bought our first house to move into in 98 and um it just happened to be a fixer upper because that's all we could really afford to buy it was you know it had shag carpet overgrown bushes we got an fha loan and we bought it we borrowed our down payment from a family member and it was like i think 1800 dollars. so i mean we really started from scratch and had no money and um we moved in and started kind of working on our house slowly and and um maybe after about two or three months we had it reappraised and and we had some equity in the house and back then flipping really wasn't a um really a term you really heard about much um so so um we kind of thought hey we might could do this for a living so my wife and I, we bought our second house and took a chance and took many chances over and over and over. And here we are 23 years later, over, you know, almost 1200 houses later, we have flipped a ton of houses, man, and, and have, have really enjoyed it. It's been a lot of work, but it's changed my life. It's changed my kid's life, my wife's life. It's been amazing. Why are you still counting? after 500 i really i i really i mean we just have like a internal system so i just know about how many it is but you know those aren't like deals a lot of other investors might might throw out you know deals that they were realtors on or broker to deal like these are houses that i deeded in my name or my llc name sweet sweet yeah so it sounds like was the was the first house you bought was that your first deal was, was that your first actual flip that was the first house i ever bought yeah and, and it wasn't really intended to be a flip it was intended to be our home and um i think we just saw opportunity after we uh you know painted some walls um under that shag carpet was beautiful hardwood floors and we cleaned them up and, and you know we saw opportunity there so we kind of did it again and again and again and you know for a long time my goal was to flip one house a month and if i could do 12 houses a year one house a month my life would be forever changed wow and and um and it was it really was and and you know i've always been a little ambitious so it's kind of we um kind of ramped up every time we hit that one goal you know it was one house a month and then we got to two houses a month and then and then, hey, maybe we could do three houses a month. And maybe we could do four houses a month. And that's kind of how I've gotten to where I am now. You know, last year we bought 50 rental properties. Um, we've been working on a mini storage um, property I'm doing. So, you know, I've kind of ventured out into other aspects of real estate. But, um, but you know, flipping is really where my heart's at. Sounds good. Sounds good. Okay. So, I know you kind of stumbled upon your first flip. So after you did your first two or three, did you get any training from a rehab standpoint or from a real estate trap standpoint? Okay, so my my stepdad is from California and he had dabbled in real estate in California. So we kind of um, uh, I hung out with him as much as I could, watching you know him look at properties and and I would watch him kind of analyze properties. And, um, he's a pretty intelligent guy, pretty sharp guy. Um, and, uh, and what I would do is I would watch the way he did things and I would, I would mimic some things he did. And then I would also learn what not to do by watching him, (laughs) you know, make mistakes. Right. And then I've got an older brother that's uh, a licensed builder and he was remodeling houses at the time. So, you know, I would, reach out to him and and get advice from him back then you didn't have the youtube videos that you could research you know how to how to lay tile right you you really had to get 
kind of dirty, you know, get in the job and learn how to do it. So, so, um, you know, probably the first 20 or 30 houses I did, I was, it was mainly just me working in the house. I had a brother-in-law that helped me some. And then, um, man, I became a great painter. <laughs> you know, yeah. I, I can't imagine. Hey, I can painting, still bro. paint a house by myself if I need to. Yeah. I'm sure you can do everything when it comes to a house if you really need no, to. Not, not, not everything, but, but you know, uh, what I don't know how to do, I know if it's done right or not, you know? Definitely, definitely. That's I've always been that guy where I didn't really, I didn't always want to know all the answers. I see a lot of people try to learn everything they can and and be disappointed if they don't know the answers but really the way i operate is as long as i have somebody in my network that knows the answer that's really all i need that was a that was a great nugget right there definitely, definitely. yeah so i think you know people get caught up and and um sometimes they'll analyze a deal to death and that makes them scared to jump in and then they, you know, want to get their LLCs lined up and get everything, um, you know, get uh, all their paperwork. I, I literally bought my first 200 houses that I flipped in my personal name. Get out of here. No, yeah, I really did. I really did. I would not recommend that, but you know what? But, but you know what? I just jumped in. I dove in and, and I, I took action. And, you know, um, and I, I'm grateful that, that I n never encountered any problems from that. But, but I mean, sometimes I've seen so many people spend thousands of dollars trying to get all their LLCs and all their corporation papers done and filed. And then they never even do anything with it. They never, never do anything with it. Right. So, right. So I feel like probably it would be better to to do like jump in take action get something moving and then you know start worrying about all that other stuff later is that I, bad advice i don't no, know it worked that's, me. Great advice. Yeah. that's great advice we didn't have our llc's worked up we didn't even have we weren't even married when we started we were just <laughs> yeah, like i couldn't even spell llc yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know I could. But I was making deposits, right? I was That's making deposits. Yeah. Yeah. You, you could count. <laughs> Definitely. Well, Matthew, we're so excited. We're so elated. We can't wait to have you this Tuesday at the Vulcan, REI Live Birmingham. You guys come out, come enjoy Matthew. Come learn from Matthew. He has a wealth of knowledge. And we're just so excited he'll be at REI Live Birmingham. I, I got one request, Matthew. Okay, brother. What you have to show us the transformation of the storage units. Okay, I will. At least some yes. pictures. You got to go in detail, but I at least want to see some pictures of what that looks like. Yes. Um, I'll try to get a video of it, okay? Where are video. Swing? Video. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Hey, I'm so excited, y'all. Thank y'all so much for inviting me, okay? Thank you, Matthew. We can't wait to see you. Hey, and I love Birmingham. I love my city. I really do. Birmingham on the map, baby. Birmingham loves you. That's too. right. That's right. <laughs> All right. I'll see y'all soon. All right, All right. Matthew.